A major winter storm walloping. The bruising fight to win Tuesday's Republican the most dangerous virus possible. In today's world, it may seem like computers are capable of doing anything a human can do, only better. But in reality, humans are still superior to computers at solving many tasks, like reading text, translating languages, or even recognizing images. A computer cannot tell you whether an image contains a cat or a dog. It just can't, uh, which is amazing to me because it seems like such an easy thing. Computers can't do that. Luis Fanon is an NSF-supported computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon University, the CEO of Duolingo.com, and a pioneer in the field of human computation, now known as crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing harnesses the collective intelligence of a group of humans to solve problems. Usually, this group of humans comes from the billions of people that use the internet worldwide. So that task could be translating the whole web or just solving a small little problem. And a lot of times it's things that we don't think are very hard. In 2000, Von Ahn created a program to help filter out spam on the internet. It's called CAPTCHA, or Completely Automated Public Touring Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. CAPTCHAs are those distorted, squeakly characters you have to type all over the internet. CAPTCHA asks users to retype those distorted characters. If typed correctly, the computer knows the web user is human and grants access to the page. Since computers have a hard time recognizing boundaries between words, they cannot tell the difference between, for example, WARN and WHAM if the letters are too close together. And the reason it works is because humans can read these distorted characters, but computers can't. After the success of CAPTCHA, Von Ahn leveraged the technology and created ReCAPTCHA, which uses crowdsourcing to solve a different problem, the digitizing of books. All the words that the computer cannot recognize in the book digitization process, we're getting people to read them for us while they type a CAPTCHA on the internet. ReCAPTCHAs have two words. One of the words is a regular CAPTCHA that the computer knows the answer to. The other distorted group of letters is a word that the computer was unable to recognize when scanning a book. If you type the correct word for the one for which we knew the answer, we assume you're a human, and we also get some confidence that you typed the other word correctly. After enough humans type the same thing for the unknown word, the results are sent back to the scanned document, eventually resulting in a fully transcribed book. But digitizing books was just the tip of the iceberg for Von Ahn. His current project focuses on translating the entire web into foreign languages using crowdsourcing. If we want to translate the whole web, we can't just use 10 humans or 100 humans. We literally need millions of humans to help us. Von Ahn and his team decided to tap into the 1.2 billion people who want to learn a new language by creating Duolingo.com, a free website that actually teaches language while at the same time asking users to translate Wikipedia. It's kind of kill two birds with one stone. Beginners are given small sentences or single words to translate. More advanced users are given larger phrases. Each translation is then crowdsourced, with users rating translations based on their correctness. By looking at the translation that has the highest number of votes, that translation actually happens to be really accurate. Users of Duolingo.com are able to translate Wikipedia at impressive speeds and all for free. With Duolingo, we're expecting that each person per year is going to do hundreds if not thousands of sentences. Beyond CAPTCHA and Duolingo, crowdsourcing has also been used to solve much more complicated problems, like predicting the folding structure of proteins. Scientists at the University of Washington created an online game called Fold It that has proven to be very successful. It turns out that some of the players in Fold It can do much better than computers, and some of the players in Fold It, in fact, can do as, as well as professional scientists, which is pretty amazing. For example, scientists have been working for 12 years to map the structure of a protein that has the potential to help fight the HIV and AIDS viruses. Folded players were able to fold and map the structure in just 10 days. It's not just with games, with all the crowdsourcing mechanisms. Uh, sometimes the data can also be used to improve how computers work. With examples like ReCAPTCHA, Duolingo, and Foldit, it's clear that crowdsourcing is more than just a problem-solving tool. It's proof that sometimes it takes a human to finish a computer's job.